Good morning, friendship. Oh, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. It's 11 o'clock. It's time to call our worship service to order. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Can you praise the Lord with me today? Because he's so worthy to be praised. We know we still have those that are coming in the sanctuary. But that's all right. Come on in, come on in, come on in. And also we welcome those that are viewing us as we live stream this service today. That's a blessing. God is continuing to move. God is continuing to do some things. Our deacons are standing. They're prepared to start us and start this service off with a devotional hour. But see, when you walked into the sanctuary, you should have already been, engine should have been already reared up. You should have already been ready to start that you would praise his holy name because he's so worthy. If he did something for you this morning, praise him and give him a hand clap of praise. He woke you up this morning. He got you started on your way. It's not about your situation or your circumstance, but it's about who he is in your life. Because you're in charge. Good morning, friendship. Good morning, friendship. Our scripture reading is coming from the 39th book of Psalms. I said I would take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I would keep my mouth with a brow while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was mustering the fire burnt to speak I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my ends in the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. I read you Psalm 39 one through the four verses. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Hey, I need thee, oh. Amen, amen, amen. Let's just go ahead and let them in. I'll give you time. Uh, I have a cell phone here. I am not going to pay the bill, but I see somebody already running for it. Amen, 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 amen. All right, that bill is paid and that has been clear. You know, it's always so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Because if it was not for his goodness and it was not for his grace and mercy, 
we wouldn't be here this morning. My brother walked in the door, Deacon Shelton, and said, he said, tomorrow, I think he said, he had a heart attack. They took his heart out and laid it on, his, on the table and put a vowel in it. But he was so glad to be here today one more time. So you know you have to be thankful for that. You have to give God honor and praise for that. You know, somebody went through something this week, not knowing that they would even be here today. But through God's grace and mercy, he showed favor and favor to us all. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, our Father, Lord, here come your children, dear Lord. Father, we are hung hand to hand up here, dear Lord. Father, because we are connected to you, dear Lord, like a links and changes, dear Father. Lord, because we need you, dear Father. Lord, we need you every minute, every second, every hour, dear Lord. Father, because grandmother prayed for us, dear Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord. Father, you didn't let none of her prayers go unanswered, dear Father. So surely, 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 you won't let ours, dear Lord. Because, Lord, we were taught that way. We was taught to trust, have faith, and believe in your mighty word, dear Lord. No matter what comes upon us, dear Father, we knew through you, Lord, that you would bring us through, dear Father. Lord God, because no matter what, dear Father, Something is going on, dear Father, in our lives, dear Lord. But Father, if we only knew how to look to the hills from which our help comes, dear Lord, and our help comes from you, dear Lord. Father, you, we know that you can bless us, dear Father, because you said if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to tell you thank you, dear Lord. But Lord, we thank you for the small things. We thank you for the large things, dear Father. Lord, we just thank you for the people that we come in contact with, dear Father. Lord God, we thank you for everyone that's here this morning, dear Father. Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, dear Father. Lord, you can only and you only can walk the pews, dear Father. Lord, touching every heart and touching every mind, dear Father. Lord, you know that our pastor, dear Father, Lord, is in need of you, dear Lord. Father, just to bring the word, dear Lord. And, Lord, we just ask for a special blessing upon his voice, dear Father, that you would always keep it strong, dear Father. And then, Father, that wonderful wife that he has, dear Lord, that she will always be there to do whatever it is, dear Father. Because, Lord, you said in your word, dear Father, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favors of the Lord. So, Lord God, we know that they are blessed. And then, Father, we just thank you, dear Lord. Now, bless a choir, dear Father. Lord, bless each and every one of us. And then, Father, we'll give you all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. This concludes our devotion. Everybody stand to your feet. Come on, come on. Greet your neighbor. Somebody greet your neighbor. Tell somebody hello. Tell somebody hello. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Now I'm gonna ask you that again. Cause the Bible said anything dead ought to be buried. Jesus. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are holy. You are worthy. None.
before thee, worthy, oh, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, worthy, oh, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, yeah, put your hands together like this, come on, make some noise. Lord of Lords, you are the great I am, worthy, oh King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are the great I am, worthy is your name, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are the great I am, worthy is your name, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are the great I am, how many of y'all know he's the great? Bless the Lord in this house, everybody. Come on, bless the Lord in this house. 
Everybody, everybody. Anybody need something from the Lord in this place? The Lord is in this place. Listen. I shall have What I decree, what I decree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Come on, say I shall have. I shall have. What I decree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. So I'm going to speak, speak into the atmosphere. Oh, I'm going to. Come on, let's say that again. Come on, come on, come on. Listen. I shall have. I shall have. What I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Oh, I shall have. Raise your voice in this house, so I'm going to speak it. Listen, listen, listen. I shall have. I shall have. 
what I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Everybody. So I'm going to speak it to the Speaking to, so I'm going to speak in. Speaking to the atmosphere. Can I get about two or three people to just bless the name of the Lord in this house? Come on, speak your blessing. Speak your miracle. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Good morning, friendship. Good morning. We thank God for being in this house of worship one more time. Amen. This is first Sunday where we observe the ordinances of the church, communion, and baptism. Amen. The Lord blessed us this morning to be able to baptize six into the body of Christ. Amen. And we are going to extend to them the right hand of fellowship and present them with a certificate and a Bible. Devon Burris, amen. The young man, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship and we give you a certificate and a Bible, amen. <laughs> Stephen Warren Massey Sistrump II. God bless you, Master. I extend to you the right hand of fellowship, and I present you with a baptism certificate and with a Bible. Amen. Amen. Lydia Thompson. Amen. This young lady, I was on my way out of the sanctuary and met her this morning, and she was looking for the place to be baptized. <laughs> she was excited, and I said, you're going to be baptized? Yes, sir, I am. Amen. And it's good when you can have them excited about baptism. Amen. So I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And we present you with a Bible and a certificate. Amen. God bless you. Deidre White. Young lady, I extend to you as well the right hand of fellowship. And we present you with a Bible and with a certificate as well. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Ventressa Gaddis. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And we also extend to you a Bible and a baptismal certificate. God bless you. <laughs> and Jeremy Grant. Amen. God bless you. We extend to you the right hand of fellowship as well, and we present you with a certificate and with the Bible. May God bless you and may God keep you as I pray. Amen. Come on, God.
anybody want the Lord to rain on them? Have you been going through and you just need some assurance? Let your glory fill this place. Let your all consuming fire fill this tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. I need you to breathe new life within us. Send a refreshing Lord. Purify our heart. Let your glory fill this place. Let your all consume me. for the rain. Say rain on us. Come on, choir. Lord, breathe. Oh, shower down. Shower down. Send your spirit, Lord. Oh, rain.
Let your all consume me. My members in the choir about her son. He received one of the DVDs of one of our services and it touched me because in the message that was given to me it said that we inspired him. But I'm here to tell you each and every one of us inspired somebody. But what I want him to know that he's inspiring me. So you let him know that he's inspiring me.
giving all praise and honor unto my father, to Pastor Trotter, to all the ministers that labor with him, to the friendship family, Sister Trotter, and all of our loving family. I'm standing on behalf of the hospitality ministry. If we have any guests visiting with us, would you please stand and remain standing? Amen, 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 amen. You know, when I look around and the first thing caught me was this family standing. And so I know that has to be a family reunion. You know, God reunited you all for a reason. And not just them, but everyone that stood. God put you here. He put you here at this time and this moment. Because you may leave here today and you won't get a chance to see us anymore and we may not see you again. But through God's grace and mercy, you travel many miles and many highways and byways that you don't know the people that are beside you or driving past you. But God give you this one opportunity to show some love and God is love. So with the friendship family, be graceful and give us that love. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for another Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Another first Sunday, yes. which means that another month has come and gone. Amen. And time is moving on and waiting for no one. Amen. But we thank God that he spared our lives and allowed us to be here today. Amen. We want to say to those of you who have visited with us today, welcome to Friendship. We're so glad to have you. We thank God for sending you our way. And the next opportunity you have, please come back and be with us again. We also want to welcome those who are viewing us by the internet, live streaming. We are glad to have you as well. Amen. We want to give an, uh, a special welcome to the North Texas, Texas chapter of Jack and Jill of America. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for them being here with us today as they are celebrating the annual Black Family Day. Amen. And they chose friendship to come and worship today and we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Sister Christine Smith, amen, a member of our church, amen, has invited them to come today. Amen. And we thank God for them being here today. Amen. Just a couple of announcements and then we will move forward with our worship experience. We want to say congratulations to Dr. Robert E. Bostick, not Deacon Bostick, but Dr. Robert E. Bostick. Amen. The president, the faculty, and graduating class of the University of North Texas School of Education announced the graduation of Robert E. Bostick on May 9, 2014 with a doctorate degree in education. <laughs> Amen. We say to Dr. Bostick, congratulations. Amen. Not only will he be receiving his doctoral degree, I mean, he's one of our 8 o'clock worshipers, but the Lord has blessed him with a, another superintendent job in the city of Houston. Amen. Amen. So he will be move, moving to Houston. Amen. As a superintendent of one of those school districts. We say amen to him. Congratulations. Amen. Also on this coming Saturday, May the 10th at 11 a.m. from 11 to 2, we will be having the annual women's ministry tea here at Friendship. And they're asking the ladies, if you would, to please come out 
and share with them in this glorious occasion on this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Amen. If you want to know more information after service, they will be out in the foyer. Amen. With a table set up where you can sign up or you can get more information or you can go online and sign up as well. Amen. But we invite all of the ladies of friendship to come and share in this tea. Amen. Just a couple of other announcements. We want to remind you that on May 14th through 16th, that's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be having our spring revival that will be leading up to our 33rd church anniversary. Amen. That will take place on the third Sunday. Amen. So we invite you to come and share with us in our spring revival. Amen. Amen. All right. We thank God again for your being here. Amen. Please make sure that you look at your bulletin. Amen. So that you can know what's going on in the month of May. We have a lot of things that are going on and we don't want you to miss out on any of them. Amen. 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 Our deacons are going to come at this time as we continue to worship God with our giving. Amen. Here at Friendship. Amen. We believe in tithes and we believe in offering. Amen. Tithe is what we owe God. The offering is the seed that we sow. And now we're going to give back to God that which so rightfully belonged to him. And then we're going to also give in offering and to our building fund. And we're going to do it as the Bible tells us to do. Amen. As a cheerful giver. Because God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come asking, praying in our Son Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
way down in South Louisiana years ago, they, there was a song that says, take all your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It's corporate prayer time. All of us who want to bring our burdens to God, come on down. As you stand together, locked hands in hands, let us talk to God. God, our Father, from whom all blessings flow, giver of all good and perfect gifts, uh, God who makes the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust, God who makes it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. God our Father from time uh, uh, even in eternity past. Uh, you've been uh, everything. You've always been. You've always had the ability to be. You've always had the everything that we need to get by. You call light into being when you say light being, light never failed to shine. Amen. You carpet the green grass all over earth and uh, cause the mountains to shift their way up and the waters to recede and the rivers to run and you, that kind of God. If you can call uh, earth and uh, world in existence right now master we say you that God who can take care of all even all our burdens so we just come to you right now saying thank you thank you for this morning wake up thank you for this morning breakfast thank you for this morning walk as we got up and walk. Uh, thank you for protecting us as we drove down the highways and byways. Uh, thank you for bringing us into this house uh, with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Uh, thank you, Master, for giving us uh, eyes to see and ears to hear. Thank you for being that kind of God. Uh, thank you for being God and God all by yourself because you decided by yourself that we would still be on this side of heaven today and all we can say is say thank you thank you thank you now God we come before you laying our burdens right at the altar we ask right now that you show us that you the kind of God that uh, you got that kind of peace that passes all understanding uh, but help us to know right now the breadth and the length and the width and the depth of your love uh, let us know right now that whatever we bring in uh, to this altar you can take care of it and I'm claiming it right now in the name of Jesus uh, if there's somebody burdened with help today in the name of of Jesus I say master do what only you can do if it's somebody with a problem that's a family heavyweight problem uh, that they know they can't take care of I just say in the name of Jesus you right now master take care of it uh, somebody burdened with how they gonna get another penny because they're out of a job but uh, you got the cattle and the cattle on a thousand hills and I know you can handle it father we ask right now somebody uh, locked in a situation that they know they need to get out of it. Uh, somebody been overcome by drugs. Uh, somebody been overcome by hard times. Uh, somebody been overcome by deep problems. Uh, somebody's about to stumble right now. But I say in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, even the Christ, uh, take it right now. Amen. 
Oh God, I, I, I just pray right now that everyone in this assembly, everyone from the back to the front, uh, just realize how much love they've got uh, coming from Christ. That's personal love. Uh, that's love that runs from heart to heart. Uh, that's love enough for every soul in this building. We just ask right now, let your love abide. Uh, make it known to everyone who's out in the right now disappointed uh, that something didn't happen. Right now uh, someone is despaired because they don't know what the next day is going to bring. Right now somebody just want to know and hear from you. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Now we just take everything and put it in your hands. And Master we say we give it all to you. We brought our burdens and we know you are burden bearer. You started out and you bad burdens way back long ago when Abraham, uh, you brought it through Isaac and you brought it through Jacob and you, you brought Israel out of uh, Egypt and we know right now you can bring her out whatever situation. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. We ask right now that as this this our pastor come to us today. We ask now that you bless him in a mighty way. We ask that you give him that strength, Master, that, that power to say what you would have him to say and that somebody might be blessed. And most of all, Master, that somebody might be saved, that they come running up to this altar. We ask your blessing upon the pastor, Sister Trotter, every member of this body. We just say, Master, give us what we need. And we be careful to bless your name. And now unto him who's able. Unto him who's able. Unto him who's able. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. A servant's prayer. Amen. 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 And amen. you stand for the preaching of God's word. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we will read verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 7 through 10 reads, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. May the Lord bless the reader, the hearer, and the doer of his word. Father in heaven, thank you again for this preaching opportunity as we humbly submit ourselves before you, asking that you would have your way. As John said, he must increase, but I must decrease. So we just ask that you would have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give praise, thanks, glory, and honor to God the Father, to Jesus Christ, my Savior, to the Holy Spirit, my Comforter, my Keeper, and my Guide, to the ministers and to the deacons, 
and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we greet you in the name of Jesus. But we have this treasure in verse 7 in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Today, for just a little while, we're going to talk about the treasure and the vessel. The treasure and the vessel. Now, there are many things that can happen in the life and to the life of a Christian that can cause him or her to become discouraged in the ministry. In chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about the many trials and tribulations that he faced for the sake of the gospel. But in spite of his many trials and tribulations, Paul continued to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But in spite of his many trials and tribulations, Paul continued to preach and teach the word of God. The reason that Paul did this is because Paul knew the importance of the gospel. He knew the power of the gospel. And he knew the need for the gospel. Therefore, he was willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel. Now, Satan, our enemy, also knows the importance of the gospel. He knows the power of the gospel. Even though he'll never be saved, he knows the power of the gospel. And he knows the need for the gospel. That's why he uses whatever he can to stop us, or whoever he can to stop us, from spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, he'll use our failures. He'll use our disappointments. He'll use our ups. He'll use our downs. He'll even use our present situation or our condition to try and stop us from telling someone else about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Now the enemy wants us to focus on ourselves, thus losing our focus on our calling and the great commission that Jesus left for us to do. We know that that great commission is in St. Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20, which says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, a lot of Christians, amen, have fallen into the category of either being a silent movie or a pictureless TV. Well, you see a silent movie, you see the picture, but you hear no sound. With a pictureless TV, you hear the sound, but you see no picture. You see, what needs to happen is these two things need to come together. Amen. And when these two come together, the silent movie and the pictureless TV, you have a Christian who walks the walk and talk the talk. Now Paul was this kind of Christian. He didn't allow the things that had happened to him in his life and the things that had happened to his life to cause him to lose his focus. So an attempt to help us as Christians stay focused on the gospel rather than ourselves, Paul talks about the gospel as being a treasure. Now our view of the gospel will determine what we will do with the gospel. Let me say that again, our view of the gospel will determine what we do with the gospel. You see, Paul viewed the gospel as a treasure. Now, a treasure 
is something that's priceless, something that's valuable, something that's precious. So by referring to the gospel as a treasure, Paul is saying that the gospel is priceless, it's valuable, and it's precious. Now what treasure, what's a treasure to one person may be nothing to someone else. Now this is also true of the gospel. You see, everybody does not accept the gospel. Everybody does not value the gospel. Everybody does not believe the gospel. But the one who finds the Christ of the gospel has found the peril of great price. We must not fool ourselves into thinking that Satan does not know the value of this treasure that we have. Now he not only knows the value, he also knows the power of the gospel. That's why Paul said in verses 3 and 4 of this chapter that we just read, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, that Satan, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So Satan knows the power. He knows the value of the gospel. And he fights hard to keep the gospel from spreading. But I've got good news for you, Satan. Fight on, fight on, fight on, but you can't stop the spread of the gospel. Uh -huh. You see, he fights hard. But we as Christians must fight equally as hard to make sure that the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is spread throughout this whole and entire world. You see, if you've been born again, you ought to want to see somebody else get to know this Jesus who turned your life all right. Now Paul in this seventh verse of our text describes the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ as a treasure. Now when a treasure is moved from one place to another, the shipper goes to great lengths to protect the treasure. The, tr the shipper will place it in a sturdy container. The shipper will stamp or place words on the outside of the container, fragile or handled with care, to alert all those who handle that container that there is precious cargo on the inside. Now those words, fragile, handled with care, are not placed on the container to draw attention to the container itself. But they are there to alert those who handle the container that something more precious than the container is on the inside. So while Paul describes the gospel of Jesus Christ as a treasure, he describes, uh, he likens the container that holds the gospel to that of an earthen vessel. Notice Paul did not refer to the vessel that holds the gospel as a vessel of gold. Nor did he refer to it as a gospel of silver. Nor did he refer to it as a vessel of brass. But he refers to it as an earthen vessel. You see, in the Greek, the word vessel means baked clay and refers to clay pots. You see, clay pots were cheap. They were breakable and they were replaceable. Can I get a witness? But they served a necessary household function. Sometimes they were used as a vault to store valuables, but mostly they were used for holding garbage and human waste. Surely 
If Paul had referred to the vessel as a vessel of gold, silver, or brass, he knew that it would cause some Christians to think more highly of themselves than they ought to. They will put more value on the vessel rather than on the treasure that's in the vessel. By, rever by referring to the vessel as a vessel of clay, Paul was taking us back to Jeremiah chapter 18 where God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and watch the potter work. As Jeremiah watched the potter work with the vessel of clay. The scripture says that the vessel of clay became marred in the hands of the potter. You see, the problem was not with the hands of the potter, but the problem was with the clay. And although the clay vessel became marred in the hand of the potter, the potter didn't throw the clay away. Can I get a witness? But let me tell you what the potter did. He took that marred clay and he made it over again into another vessel that seemed good to the potter. You see, we're not always what God wants us to be. We don't always do what God has called us to do. We don't always walk the walk and we don't always talk the talk. But I don't know about you, but I'm glad that even when I mess up, God don't just take me and throw me away. By referring to himself and every Christian as an earthen vessel, Paul's intent was to stimulate humility in every Christian. See, the Bible teaches us in the book of Proverbs that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The book of James tells us that God resists the proud, but give it grace to the humble. Peter tells us to humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. So by referring to us as earthen vessels, Paul was putting the focus not on the perishable but container, the vessel, yeah. but on its priceless content, yeah. the treasure that was on the inside, yes, which is the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. On the outside, yeah. we might not look like much. Yeah. On the outside, we might not look very attractive. Yeah. I ain't talking about nobody, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. On the outside, we might not look very intimidating. But let me tell you something. It's not about what's on the outside. But it's about the power that's down on the inside of us. Paul, in the latter part of verse 7, tells us that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. By using the word excellency, yes. Paul is describing a power that is far more superior than any other power that exists. Yes. You see, Satan has some power, yes. but I'm glad that God has all power. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. And I'm not going to serve somebody that has some power. I believe I serve the one who has all power in both heaven and earth in his hand. And this power that Paul talks about is greater than the vessel that houses it. This power is greater than the opposition that opposes it. This power that Paul talks about is greater than in a stronghold. 
while the clay vessel are flawed, there's nothing wrong with the power that's on the inside of the clay vessel. Can I get a witness? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody messed up this week? Anybody failed God this week? Let me tell you something. Even though we all messed up, the power is still down on the inside. The word excellency of the power encourages us as Christians because it reminds us that although we are vessels of clay that are subject to fall, the power within us keeps us and helps us to be overcomers when we fall. That's why Paul could say in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, for when I am weak, then am I strong. For God's power shows up when we are weak. You see, every trial and every tribulation that we face is an opportunity for God to remind us of this fact, that although we are earthen vessels, although we may not look like much, nevertheless, the God we serve will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. It's also God's opportunity to show some unbeliever of his mighty power as he's working in our lives, bringing us through our trials and tribulations. Amen. He shows them that it's not about the vessel, but it's about the treasure that's in the verse. In verses 8 through 10, Paul reminds us of the work of Satan. He also reminds us of the power of God. Anytime in the life of a Christian you deal with the works of Satan, you can rest assured the power of God is also present. Paul says in verse 8, we are troubled on every side, which means we are hard pressed in between our situations. Situations that look like we will be destroyed. But because of the power within, he says we are not distressed. Which means even though we are pressed, we are not crushed, neither are we broken. We are fragile. We are breakable. But God don't allow our troubles to crush us. Then he says, perplexed, which means finding ourselves in situations where we see no way out. Anybody been there? But because of the power of God within, he says that we are not in despair. Why? Because God will provide us a way out of no way. Then he said we are persecuted. In other words, the enemy is constantly trying to take us out. But because of the power of God within us, can I get a witness? Amen. God never abandons his children. I'm so glad that I serve a God who will never leave me nor forsake me. God never leaves us standing alone. It might look like you're out there all by yourself. But God never leaves his children alone. Let me tell you why. Because on Calvary, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, Jesus was forsaken so that you and I will never ever be forsaken. I'm so glad that Jesus went to Calvary on my behalf. Paul said, cast down or knock down to the ground. 
but because of the power within us, we're not destroyed, nor are we knocked out. Life's situation can sometimes knock us down, but I thank God that he'll never let life's situations knock me out. In verse 10, Paul tells us as Christians that we are always at risk of dying for the sake of Christ. But we are not to worry because just as Jesus rose from the grave, one day we too will experience that resurrection power. For the sake of the gospel, Paul calls us earthen vessels. But because of the gospel, Peter said that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And guess what? We are peculiar people. Let me on my way to my seat. Y'all thought I was going to be long, but I'm going to run out of here. Let me share with you some other reasons why Paul referred to the Christian as an earthen vessel. You see, as I said earlier, that he didn't refer to the Christians as a vessel of gold. He didn't refer to us as vessels of silver or vessels of brass. It's because vessels made of these materials cannot be broken. They can be bent, they can be twisted, but they cannot be broken. That's important because vessels of clay can be broken. You see, in biblical times, when clay vessels were used as safes to protect valuable documents, they could only retrieve those documents by breaking that earthen vessel. You see, when Gideon in the Old Testament faced the Midianite army, he had only 300 men with clay pitchers, lamp, and a trumpet. Inside the clay pitcher was a lamp, but the lamp could only be seen after the clay pitchers were broken. Anybody listening to me? Victory did not come until after they broke the clay pots. So that's what was inside of them could only be seen after the pots were broken. You see, our enemy, all he sees in broken pots. Just like Gideon and his army. You see, when the enemy heard the noise of the breaking, oh, somebody ought to rejoice. Of those pots, they woke up and began to kill each other because all they could see was light shining all around them. So we are earthen vessels housing a treasure. And the only way that this treasure can come out is the earthen vessel must be broken. When we become broken vessels is when we turn our lives over to Jesus. You see, it's at this point that we say, not my will, but thine will be done. When we tell him, not my will, but thine will be done, we then become a broken vessel because it's at that point that we stop depending on ourselves. It's at that point that we stop trusting in ourselves. It's at that point that we put all of our trust in him. Can I get a witness? When we become broken vessels, 
There's some things down on the inside of us that need to come out, but they can't come out until we become a broken vessel. Love is down on the inside of us, but it can only come out when we become a broken vessel. Joy is down on the inside, but it can only come out when we are a broken vessel. Peace is down on the inside, but it can only come out when we are broken vessels. Yes, yes, long suffering is down on the inside, but it can come out until we become a, a broken vessel. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance is down on the inside, but it can only come out when we've been broken vessels. When we become a broken vessel, we can say like Isaiah, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm a broken vessel. Let me tell you the reason why I'm glad that I'm a broken vessel. Because when I became a broken vessel, I learned to say, in everything, in everything, when I'm sick, in everything, when I'm well, in everything, when I'm broke, in everything, when I have a pocket full of money, in everything. In everything, I give God thanks. We have the treasure in the vessel. But it's not about the vessel, but it's about the power that resides on the inside of us. God is still in the business of mending the broken pieces. Still in the business of putting back the vessel. This is an opportunity if there's someone today uh, that life seems to be a mess. Disappointment is your best friend. Disillusion is all about you. Now is the time to give yours to Christ. Why don't you come today? Why don't you come today? Candidate for baptism. Why don't you? He's mending broken hearts today. Why don't you? As the choir get ready to sing. Christian experience. Why don't you? Something. Oh, oh, something about the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is the sweetest name. Sweetest name. I know. I love, I love, I love. Oh, well, I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Sweetest name. today. Some people think I'm crazy, but Something. Oh, I can't explain. Oh, 
the power I feel when I call your name. It's like fire. Today. Something about the name of Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus. Takes all my problems away. Why don't, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you? Don't worry about your problems. 